Welcome to this video on tidying your data in Microsoft Excel. So in this video, I'm going to walk through six easy functions you can use to tidy your data, to change the case, to make it proper so you've got capital letters at the beginning, to join text together, to trim it of any spaces and to clean it of any new lines and special characters, non-printable characters, etc. So six really easy functions that you can use rather than going in and changing all of your data manually. You can see them on the screen in front of me. They are in the order that I'm going to do them. So the first ones I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with the first name and the second name that's on the left hand side of the screen. And I'm going to do a lower, upper and a proper function for you. So let's start with the lower because at the moment all of my names are in capital letters and that's not and sometimes we get data in that way but we don't always want it to be presented on our screen as capital letters. So let's change it into lower. So whenever you're doing any function or formula you want to click on the cell where you want that information to be presented and remember you're always going to start with an equal sign. It tells Excel you're going to start to do a function or a formula. And then I'm going to type in lower. So I've used the column headers. These are the functions that I'm going to use so you can see exactly what I'm going for. And I'm going to double click. And then all I need to do is tell Excel what I want to change to lowercase. So let's select Alice. And at this point, I've got two options. I can either close my brackets and press enter or I can just press enter and Excel will automatically close my brackets. Now, because I do a lot of functions and formulas and some of them can have multiple brackets, I do like to close my brackets down and then press enter, but you can just press enter. It will pick up that you are closing that function down and it needs a bracket at the end of it. And you'll see that I now have Alice in lowercase in column H and just to pull that down I'm going to click in the bottom right of that cell and I'm going to hold my mouse and drag that down so you can see all of that data has come. Now if I started with lowercase and I wanted them all to be capitalized then this is where my next function is going to come in and it's going to be upper. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click into the cell. Let's walk through this process nice and simply. I'm going to do an equals and an upper. Double click and then I'm going to select Alice. I'm going to close my brackets again and press enter. And you can see it's now moved again back up to upper because I've changed it to upper and let's click again in the bottom right and drag that down. So I can easily move between upper and lower case. But sometimes I want it to be proper. And in that, I mean that I want Alice to have a capital letter at the beginning, but I want the rest of it to be lower case. And that's where I'm going to use proper. And it doesn't matter whether you're coming from lower or upper or a mix, then proper will tidy this up for you really nicely. That's why it's included in this video. And it's a useful, little, simple, easy function. So again, I'm going to do equals and proper double click there. I'm going to take the lower and just pay attention to where that blue dotted line is, because that's where it's currently looking for the detail. Close your brackets and press enter. And you can see there it's now giving me a capital letter for Alice and lowercase for the rest. Now, if I just go in there and redo this and do an equals and a proper, but pick the capital letter instead, just close that brackets just to show you it works exactly the same. It's still going to give you Alice with a capitalized first letter and lowercase the rest. So let's just pull that down. Nice and easy. Doesn't matter which way you're working with it. It works quite nicely there. So let's just quickly have a look because we're halfway through already. Um, we've got the lower. So I've just got the function showing on the screen right now. We've got the upper and then we've got the proper. Very simple, very easy to use, but super powerful, especially if you're working with a lot of data that's pulled from different systems. There's just a real mess and you need to fix it. So sometimes also you want to join text together. So I've got a first name and a second name and I want to join those together into the same cell. 
So you can use functions like concat or concatenate, but actually text join is an easier way of doing this. It's one that I started using recently and I do have a full video on this and I thought about adding it in here because again, it's a super easy function to help you tidy your data. So when I go into text join, when I do equals and text and click, double click on text join, I've got three things I need to put in here. So it's slightly more complicated than the last ones we've just done, but it's so much more simpler than other ways of doing it. So the first one, my first part of this function is delimiter. And that's what I need to do to tell the system what, what I want to put in between my cells of data. So I'm going to pull in Alice Johnson. And I want a space in between that. So the way that I'm going to present that in this part, this at part of the argument, is I'm going to put a speech mark, press the space bar once to show the space, and then speech mark to close it. And then once I've done that, because that's part that part done, I'm going to press a comma. Remember, when you're separating out the parts of your function, you've got a comma. And it will move automatically onto the next part of the function, which is a true or a false. Do I want to ignore empty cells or include empty cells, which might leave me with some blank spaces. Now, it doesn't matter because I've got full sets of data. So I'm just going to click on ignore empty cells because it doesn't really, really matter. But do pay attention to that. If you've got uh, empty cells, you might want to ignore them so that you've not got blank spaces of data that looks a little bit confusing. Whatever works best for you, though. So that's part two. To get on to part three, I'm going to do a comma. And then I just need to tell the system what cells I want to pull together, what cells I want to join. And that I want Alice and Johnson. So I'm going to go back to column A and B and select both of those. So there's three parts to this, but it's still, it's still really easy. It's much more easier than concat. You're going to tell the system what you're going to put in between the cells of data that it's pulling together. Tell it, tell it whether you want it to ignore empty cells or not, just so it knows how to behave. And then you're just going to tell it what cells you want to pull together. So you don't have to select these separately and put arguments in between them. You can select them all together, close your brackets and press enter. And you can see now Alice Johnson is there with a space in the middle. So really, really nice. And if I drag that down, you can see all the others are pulled down really nicely as well. And now that I've joined that together, if I wanted that to be upper, lower or proper, I could use those functions that we've already seen to manage that information. So that's your first four functions to help tidy your text couple of others I'm going to show you. Let's just get those cells visible on the screen. So the next one I want to talk about is trim. So again, sometimes when you get data sent to you in an Excel spreadsheet, it can be a bit messy. You look at column E on the left hand side and I've got a list of pickers and I've got spaces here, there and everywhere. It's just not tidy at all. And sometimes depending on the formatting, it can come through into Excel really messy. And the trim function will just help you get rid of those empty spaces before, in the middle, or at the end of any of your text. So let's have a look at how this one works. Again, it's super simple. Equals and trim. Double click there. And it's just asking what cell you want to trim. So I'm going to go to column E and click on E2 close my brackets and press enter and you can see now stew is to the left hand side it's left aligned so it's taking away those spaces let's pull it down to see what it does to the rest of column e and it will just tidy it up you can see it's taking away spaces at the beginning at the middle and if there was anything at the end as well it would have taken that away now, that's not always visible, but sometimes if you are playing with data in Excel, if you're working with that data and then you need to transfer it to another system, if you've got any extra spaces at the end of the text, which are not visible, it can really mess up the import of your data. So trim is a nice, quick, easy function to help you just get rid of any of those. So trim works very nicely. 
The final one is clean. And again, it's a super simple function here, but it just allows you to get rid of any non-printable characters, any special characters, any um, line breaks and things like that. And you can see in column F, I have a couple of line breaks in there. I've got a couple of names on separate rows. And that you do that usually by holding down Alt when you're returning and it creates a second row or an, a further row within the cell. But sometimes, again, you want to have that all on one row. You want it nice and clean and you've got lots of data. So you don't want to have to go through every row and do it individually. You just want to use the clean function to get rid of those um, page breaks, those line breaks, and also any non-printable characters. If you've got some weird emojis and things that come in, it can pick up those sort of things as well. If it's a bit more complex, you might have to dive a bit more into clean, but very simple way of doing is, let's have a look at the function. So I'm going to do equals again and clean and double click there, and then just select again the cell that I want it to clean close that bracket and press enter and you can now see that those two have been pulled onto the same cell i'm just going to reduce that one down so that you can see that nicely so they're on the same row there's no line break in there it's not on the se second line if there was any non-printable characters in there it would have removed those as well let's just drag this one down so we can see exactly what that's doing and again you can see on column 12 so row 12, um, you can see those names have been pulled again onto the same line. So it looks like there wasn't a space in between Frank Sharp and Stu Lee's when that was typed in. So that's why that's together. But actually, you can see on row two, there was a space when that information, there was a trailing space, I guess. So um, it looks slightly different. But again, you've got functions that you can work with to tidy that up. But you've removed those extra those line breaks and things like that. Final quick tip here. Now we've gone through all of the functions there that I wanted to go through to help you tidy your data. If you want to use this for anything else, when you're copying and pasting this information, if I click on that and let's go, let's do a control and C to copy it. If I wanted to paste this, and I want to just take the data itself, don't use the shortcut. Right click, and I'm just going to actually pull this further here so you can see the pop up. And have a look at the paste options, and it's paste values you want to look at. So if you're doing any of these functions and then you want to pull your new data into another spreadsheet or another column, and you don't want it to be reliant on the function in the background, then you're just going to paste it with the values only. So a nice final quick tip there. Hope that helps. Hope these six functions, nice, super easy six functions, help you to tidy your data up and work with it quicker and better in Microsoft Excel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments what videos you'd like me to record next.